Describe why SRS dosimetry is simply harder to measure, how should you do this, and what are some dosimetric concerns when treating SRS? So the first thing, SRS dosimetry, is I'm sure as you know, we are dealing with very small field sizes. And that leads to a lack of lateral charged particle equilibrium, CPE. That causes it just to be difficult to measure for actual hand measurements. You even have difficulties within the dose algorithms accounting for that as well. So small fields, lack of lateral CPE, it just makes it hard to measure. So we have to measure it somehow. So how do we do that? Well, first things, well, let's say you want percent depth dose and you want your profiles. So here you can use a, you can use an ion chamber. And the important thing is that this has a diameter less than one millimeter. And you could use something like an edge detector. And you want something that isn't going to be oversaturated, but you also don't want the volume averaging of a big chamber with a very big volume within the chamber as well. And then also always do end-to-end -end testing for that as well. So what are some dosimetric concerns? So first thing, and this is in general, not specifically just for QA, but in general, SRS, what we care about is tumor type because that will change how we treat it and the dose we go to. Certainly location is a huge factor. Often they're in tricky locations with a lot of OARs surrounding them. You want to consider different fractionation schemes. Typically, the larger tumors do get smaller doses because it is Naturally, you're going to irradiate more normal tissues of the brain. A lot of the optic chiasm, the lens, etc., are all going to get larger doses as well because it's a larger tumor. You also want to consider the conformity index. Now, there are a lot of these. It's important to know your clinic, what you use. Do you use the RTOG conformity index? Do you use the PADIC? conformity index, it all matters. And that should be CI, not CF, first of all. So ideally, the conformity index is, if you have a conformity of one, that means it's perfect. Your 100% ice dose line is exactly the volume of your PTV and nothing else is getting 100% volume. That's ideal. But realistically, that is extremely difficult to get unless you have a perfect scenario and you're a very good planner. So normally we see one to 1.5, but you don't want any bigger than that. Sometimes you have to sacrifice, that's a physician's decision, but we as physicists need to be able to know what this is and what ranges are normal for our planning. So now again, as always, what you're gonna want to do is mention TG101. That's the SBRT. You can mention TG42. So that's for SRS, QA, things of that nature. And then you're also going to want to, same thing now that I'm also thinking about it and additional things, concerns, are the intermediate and low dose spilling because you want multiple arc angles and field angles to treat these tumors, which may, may mean that some of that low dose spilling may get greater throughout portions of the lung. And then a lot of physicians also simply look at the normal brain dose. And there are protocols and task groups here that tell you, here's what your normal brain dose should be. So those are all things to consider when SRS, it's very common for them to ask, SRS a question specifically how you measure it for QA, how you commission, how you use this for annual QA. So really know your edge detectors, know your micro chambers, know how you and your clinic actually do your SRS annual QA, and you'll be set up for success. If you have any questions, comment below. I'm happy to help. Take care, and we'll see you in the next video.